like I said, it's it's from multiple takes from different things um, that were played in 1977, but I cut them together and I put them into my song. And the way I did it was pretty much the same way he used to do it, except it's much easier on a computer. Because uh, back in the day, what you'd have to do to synchronize things is you'd have to find the beginning of the track by using a tape machine and going warp, warp, warp with the reel till you find exactly where the, the kick drum is. And then once you found that on the other machine that, that you have a, an audio source on, you'd do the same thing. You'd synchronize both your start points and then a third machine would be required to blend the two machines that you were going to press start at the same time and capture this new synchronized element. So uh, I'm sure the process, the creative process, was was difficult to, to figure out because it wasn't easy to, to just have your idea and then play for a second and hear the result. On a computer, you can do it much faster. So for example, right here, we know where the start of this downbeat is, and if we want to lock it up to the kick drum, we scroll up a million tracks away to the top of the session here and find the kick drum, and then we see if we can line it up. It's already probably pretty close to lined up. Uh, what I like to do is not have it completely lined up 100% uh, all the time because that's not really possible in a live performance, you wouldn't always nail the downbeat with the the human element. You know, there's there's going to be some interplay there. So let's see how close I locked it up here. It's pretty close. So all this extra little stuff at the front of this is is pick attack and not the actual uh, downbeat. So let's have a listen again. Uh, what it sounds like to have two things go together that really never happen together. That little part right in there where he's uh, playing on the low string and he's just really tugging at it really hard, popping the string, is uh, is something that's a, a really cool percussive sound that he used to go for a lot. He did that quite a bit on the Joe's Garage record. And um, that section that we heard right there is from uh, an outtake from Joe's Garage. And that's uh, one of the things that I always liked on that record was that that percussive low E string on the Stratocaster, you know, just really kind of popping that string. And uh, so I found a good example of it to, to throw into this, this xenocrony experiment for my song, Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> 